You've called Barry Hearn's management of snooker a dictatorship. Um, do you think things can change? Uh, probably not, but I understand why he does what he does and the way he runs his business. And I think he enjoys sort of like the thought that people are dependent on him, you know, that they feel like they've got nowhere to go. It's like, I, this, is my, this is what I'm putting on offer and you're only going to play for me and you're not going to be able to do it and you've got to get permission from me to do anything. And I think he kind of enjoys that he's got people under that sort of, in that place, if you like. And that would never work for me because I kind of like to kind of make my own choices, make my own decisions. And I don't really want to have to get permission for someone to say, can I do this? Can I do that? So before, as I kind of find it a bit sort of... Um, like I was being suffocated in a way and and I kind of like started to educate myself on business because I thought I'm not going to be able to play snooker and just do this and be happy. So I started to look into different opportunities. So I started to work with Eurosport, I started to get involved with property, I've started to have got a really good, like I was saying to you before, an advisor that I invest in certain things. And, you know, I kind of do lots and lots of other stuff and I kind of feel like that basically I've learned that it's just the way that model is designed and some people fit into that workforce really well. I happen just to not fit into that workforce really well, but I still wanted to play snooker. So I've kind of got it to a stage now where it doesn't feel like a dictatorship. I'm not bothered about, you know, um, the, 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 the carrots that get dangled. If you do well in this, you're getting that. I don't want to be in that. I don't want to be. I don't actually care what tournament I'm playing. I just, they're all the same to me. It's just a place, they provide a platform for me to go and play snooker because that's what I enjoy doing. I don't care if I win or lose because I've created this fantastic life outside of snooker where I can have freedom, where I can kind of go, well, can we do this? Can we do that? And it's not a problem. <laughs> In fact, it gets encouraged and we want to work with you. And I and I'm much rather a conversation of where someone wants to work with me and it's 50-50 than someone says, well, I don't know about that. We'll let you know. And then you're kind of waiting and then it's a no. And, and then you're going like, we will tell you in the contract it, that you've signed it. And you think, hold on a minute here, drop me out with you in your silly contract, do you know what I mean? So that's why I've kind of gone elsewhere. And it's been the best thing I've ever done because actually all the other stuff that I do outside of snooker is much better, much more exciting. And, and it'll go on much longer. So, so if I finish playing snooker tomorrow, that's that done. But all the other stuff that I've put in place, like the academies that we're doing in the Far East now, which is fantastic, that's another thing I'm excited about. That's all gonna be, once I finish playing, all that's still gonna continue. And, I've, and I took a year out of doing nothing, and I was like, being a snooker player that doesn't play snooker, it's quite a boring life. So now I've kind of created other interests and other things, and now I just get excited every day by what I do. And, and now I just kind of feel so detached from snooker in that I don't need it, to support whatever I want to do and to, to enjoy my life, but I just choose to go and play it and have fun with it. And I think that's probably why over the last five or six years that I've enjoyed my snooker more than I ever have done. And, and like I said, you know, I, I'm one of them people that if I'm forced into doing something, I will find a way of how to make my life better. So like I said, you know, um, you know certain things happen and you can, I could either accept it but I know I'm never going to be able to accept it, so I kind of go, well, I've got to like find my peace and where, where I'm happy. Yeah. I've got to find my happy place. And, and that's what people do. They try to screw me down, but by screwing me down, they just lose me even more because I'm not one of them that's going to be... It's like Braveheart when he was on the slab. That's what you're going to have to do to me, mate. You're going to have to put me on that slab and you're going to have to go chop his head off because if you don't do that, I'm going to keep coming at you and I'm going to keep fighting, I'm going to keep surviving and I'm going to, and I'm going to keep coming out, landing on my feet. One thing I know is that whatever shit I go through, I end up landing on my feet. <laughs> it's like amazing. I just think, wow, how did I come out of that? <laughs> so no matter what gets thrown at me, like with a lawyer situation, that only happened because I surrounded myself with good people and, and it took one to know one. So my mate's a very good person and he knows that I'm a good person, but he's on another level and he's gone, hold on. I can take care of that for you. I've gone, all right, cool. All right. You know, so it's kind of, I always end up 
finding the right people because I'm actually quite a good guy and I'm not a piss taker, I'm not a liberty taker, I've got a good heart, my kindness, I can be a bit of a people pleaser, um, but I've toughened up over the last four, five, six years. Uh, I'm still a bit of a softy, um, but I don't suffer fools anymore and life's a lot better for it. And even though I do still think it is a dictatorship, it doesn't bother me anymore because I've removed myself from being in, a, in that regime, if you like. So yeah. it's kind of hard in a way because I go to snooker and I, d I like, um, it's kind of like, I feel like I don't fit in anymore because everyone's living that life. Like 99% of them snooker players, that's all they've got. And that's all they are. And I see the, I see the pressure and I see the stress and I just see, I see, I see it and I kind of just think, oh God, I don't really want to be around that energy. You know, I don't really want to be in a room full of people that are living that sort of life where they think they've had a result because they've got a few tournaments, but really it's just like, pff, it's a bag of, pff, it's not great, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, it's not, I couldn't get excited by that. So when I see them excited by it and that's all they've got, I find it quite sad in a way. So I kind of didn't, I didn't, I looked at that and thought, I don't want to be one of them. So I need to kind of like create a life where I'm inspired by people, but I still like playing snooker. So, you know, I, I, I play their tournaments, I have a bit of fun win or lose, don't really give a monkeys, you know, and it, and it just suits me really, you know what I mean, to, mm. to kind of take it for what it is. But I understand why, they, why it's set up how it is, and it's, it's, it's a good way of, you know, keeping everyone under manners. Yeah. And if you're happy to be kept under manners, then, you know, you'll keep kind of like going along with it. But mm. I was never going to be one of them people, and I never will be. So, you know, what do you do? You, you know, you, you either go brave up, that's it, I'll, you know, I chop my own head off because I'm not going to live like that. Or I'll go, you know what, I'm a survivor, I'm a fighter. It's a wonderful world out there, there's loads of opportunities. And there's people out there that do want to work with me and get excited about working with me. And I kind of, and you know, you know the good ones and the bad ones. You know, a good one goes, yeah, it's not a problem. As soon as they start putting problems in front of me, I'm like, <laughs> bye. <laughs> do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So I'm now down to one person that I talk to at World Snooker, and I've told him that if he comes up and starts sort of like pushing too much, I said, I won't talk to you either. <laughs> <laughs> I said, You're the only person that, that can come and talk to me. I said, Everyone else is barred. They don't get nothing from me. They've got to go for the lawyers, <laughs> my friend's lawyers. <laughs> But you, you, I'll talk to you. I said, but if you carry on, that I'll, I'll cut that one off as well. I said, so you're the last man standing. I said, so don't push it. And he goes, okay, well, okay. <laughs> oh, all right, cool. As long as we know where we are. <laughs> and it works well. Yeah. I love the girls that work at World Snooker. There's two or three of them. I love them. You know, they're good as gold. You know, and I'm, you know, I've got a great relationship with the security guys at World Snooker because it's tough, tough job mm. what they do, and we kind of live live on that circuit together. So, you know, it's, um, you know, I, I'm just a people's person. At the end of the day, I'm a people person. I don't like authority. You put authority in front of me, I'm gonna fucking, I'm gonna go like a cage animal, mate. <laughs> but I'm a bit smarter now, whereas before I'd throw tantrums and this and that. Now I go, you know what, let's just be a little bit smart about it. Like, how can I turn this into, to, into an advantage for me? Mm. You know, and, um, you know, that's, that's how I've changed, basically. But, but that's just come through education. That's just come through surrounding myself with clever, intelligent people have gone, Ron, look, there's another way of doing it. Have you thought about doing it like this? And I went, yeah. wow. I said, that's a blinder, that one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But you need to be resourceful. Yeah. To have that sort of, you know, to be able to do that, you kind of got to be resourceful. And, 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 and hopefully, I have become resourceful for them as well. You know, they might go, Ron, can you do this? And I'm like, you know what? <sighs> Anything for you. <laughs> do you see what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah. a, it's like a, you build good relationships and, you know, if, and if, you know, if, you, if I can be of service to them, I am of service because I know that it's a, it's a two-way thing, you know, and, and, um, and, that, and, that, and that's a good way of, hopefully that's explained <laughs> the situation. <laughs> this is still the quick fire round. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, yeah. That's good, it's good. We've actually got the real quick fire round. Now. Okay. If you enjoyed this, if you want more, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and remember, if you don't risk anything, you risk everything.